Yes, you guys, how are all of you doing today? I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lions TV, and welcome to an opposition analysis video. Today, I'm joined by Chris Ree from Talk Norwich City. You guys, of course, when it comes to the second part of this video, you can find that on their channel later on tonight. But without wasting any more time, Chris, how you doing, man? I'm so good. I'm so excited for Saturday. I'm so excited. I'm normally... <laughs> Normally, so worried about Chelsea coming to town, but I'm feeling a little bit more confident this time around. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, uh, you know, looking at the start of your season, disappointing loss against Liverpool, but for me, I saw promise in your performance. You know, there were times where you were getting in behind Liverpool's back line and causing them issues. And then I guess that confidence went through to the next game against Newcastle, where you played them off the park and got an impressive 3 1 win. So, as a Norwich fan, how confident are you feeling for the season? Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you. You're smart because <laughs> all of the, honestly, everyone has wrote Norwich off after that Liverpool game. It was like, ah, oh, Liverpool thrashed them, Liverpool this, Liverpool that. But if you're a true football fan mm -hmm. and you love the game, you would know that in the second half, Norwich City asserted themselves well. We played some fantastic stuff. We held our own. And, and ultimately, I believe as a Norwich fan, you know, we've actually played Liverpool at the best time. Get mm. that game done and out of the way, and then let, and then we can start to make some progress. Arguably, actually, from a Norwich point of view, we've we've been we've had our welcome to the Premier League game. We've we've done some stuff there, but then we played Newcastle up next, and and, and quite frankly, they're a shambles at the moment. And so <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. we did play some some pretty sensational fark ball, as it's known in North fark ball, yeah, against Newcastle. <laughs> Um, but believe me, you know I'm, I'm so pleased you've said that about the Liverpool game because I actually think that that was I can be more impressive because at the moment as it stands, Norwich City have nine injuries, nine yeah. injuries, and we held our own against Liverpool. We, th we 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 really did dominate Newcastle. The scoreline doesn't really do it justice. Yeah. In terms of how much we dominated that game of football, and so now in terms of how, how, what do I see going forward for the season, I think Norwich fans are still cautious. But there's been such a, a, an uplift in optimism after that Newcastle game because it, we, we felt like we were in third gear. I'm not sure if you've seen yeah. any, of the, any of the highlights, but um, but believe me, throughout the game, we were thinking, tell you what, we could give this more here. And we had probably <laughs> two or three chances in the first half that we didn't bury. Yeah. We probably, probably could have scored four or five in that game. So, um, yeah, I think, I think we're all excited. Um, I, th I think that we are slightly cautious still, yeah. particularly with this Chelsea game coming up. Look, we, we are confident, we're more confident than we ever have been going into a game against Ch Chelsea, but at the end of the day, you're still Chelsea. Exactly, exactly. And uh, and yeah, um, you know, when it comes to the game from a Chelsea fan's perspective, I think there's definitely a lot of respect for Norwich City. I think with how you guys have played, it's been impressive. Uh, and You know, when it came to that Liverpool game, you know, I watched that game because I needed to do that for research for my for my preview. And um, yeah, I took a lot of uh, hints and notes from how we were going to play against Liverpool. You know, like uh, when you guys used the 4-1-4-1 to pack the midfield, that was a tactic which we used against, uh, against Liverpool as well. And I think Norwich definitely had the blueprint to uh, how you play against Liverpool. The execution wasn't there. And Liverpool, you know, they've got great players. They can score from any moment. But um, I, I definitely thought that, okay, fart ball, you know, things are looking promising. And, you know, that's like when you realise you, you get you used to have guys like Madison with you. Um, you had uh, Murphy as well, you know, two big promising players. You're thinking, are we going to get promoted? Are we going to get to the Premier League? But you guys did, playing a, a really attractive style of football. You signed, an inc you know, one of the signings of like probably your history in, in Puki, like, some some random guy from uh, where is it Sweden or something? <laughs> it was like signed from like some Swedish team, and now uh, again two impressive uh, three goals already in the Premier League. You know, it looks really good. So uh, for me, teams that get promoted, if they don't know how to score goals, normally they go back down. And I think from this aspect, I think this is the big advantage that Norwich have over maybe other teams because. You look really fluid when it comes to breaking teams down. Yeah, I think I think um, you, your, your analysis is correct. Um, last time we were in the Premier League, 
Uh, we, we did struggle to score. We had Cameron Drome up front, yeah. who is a, he's a decent enough championship striker. And he scored some crucial goals to get us promoted. He scored at Wembley. He scored against um, our, our noisy neighbours, Ipswich Town, i.e. League One FC, um, <laughs> to, 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 to get us there. Yeah. But ultimately, when we got there, we kind of just didn't have anything about us, really. Yeah. Now we're in this place where we've now got a very strong identity, a very strong culture, both on the pitch and off the pitch. The supporters completely buy into it. Mm-hmm. Um, that there, there, there's there's no there's no particular rift. There's, yeah. there's um, now this kind of culture with supporters that we're going to get behind the boys, and you know mm-hmm. that's so exciting. And as you you said, you know before we got our our big fat gold championship winners trophy last season, mm-hmm. we lost Madison, and yeah. you know that is a big big player to sell. And Daniel Farquhar called cool blind. We also lost Alex Pritchard who. Yeah, it's so a Huddersfield, yeah. Absolutely. But so look, um, I think from a Norwich fan's point of view, we still feel super grateful that we're here. And in a way, that's an incredibly powerful emotion to feel because yeah. it means that there's a real lack of expectancy. We don't expect to go and win against Chelsea, but we know who and we expect that we'll play our way against Chelsea, not mm. what Alan Shearer says on match today, <laughs> not what Mark Lawrence says on match today, yeah, not of course. what Gary Lineker says on yeah. match today. We'll play our way, and I think that that will surprise a lot of people in terms of when the opposition comes to comes up against us as well. Um, someone that doesn't do their research will go, oh, come on, this is just little old Norwich, little old Norwich, this yeah. and this and that. But you know what? I'll you know quite happily say it. We've got players in our squad that aren't the most exceptionally gifted, but as a unit, the, the the way we are just so cohesive, the ball flows, the style of play is, yeah. is you know, it's pretty exceptional. It's the best football I've ever seen Norwich play. I've obviously been supporting Norwich um, since I was a kid. I'm a local lad, mm. not a glory hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and honestly, wholeheartedly. That's what I get into that, yeah. This is, this is the best football we have ever ever seen and um, and i'm really interested to hear from you actually you know when because i remember you know what i one of my first memories of, of football full stop yeah that Gi- Franco zola back heel flick oh one of the greatest and, goals uh, yeah and, and, oh. you know and you know there's a lot of history and you know i'm great friends with robert fleck who didn't hit it oh. well at chelsea but okay such a fantastic guy um, who else have we got links in terms of Chelsea? Um, who else have we got? But those are two that come to mind straight away. Yeah, two notable ones. I'm dead interested in what, what your opinion is um, in terms of how do you how do you feel going into into the game against the newly promoted side? Are, are you nervous yeah. as a Chelsea fan at all? Or uh, I think that yeah, I think you know Lampard needs to get a win now. We've been promising it. You know our performances have been quite. Well, uh, good at times, but um, now we need that result against Norwich, a team that plays football as well. You know, a team that likes to attack down the flanks. It's quite similar to how we like to play. So I think that it's definitely going to be a good game. I think that with Timo Puki, who's been very good in behind the lines, has been really impressed with his movement. He knows how to score, you know. So um, I think there's definitely a lot to be respected when it comes to Norwich. And you know, I think another reason uh, that you guys should be respected as well is how you've just gone about, you know, developing the club and coming with this new uh, structure. I mean, you know, this emphasis on a lot of young players, homegrown players. And uh, I mean, it's really no surprise that, you know, and I'm always saying this on my channel, when a club has a philosophy, that's when you benefit from it the most. I mean, you know, look at last season, you, you guys sold Madison and Pritchard for like, what, 40 million for those two players. I mean, that's incredible for a championship club to earn 40 million for two players. And you were still able to cope with that, invested wisely. And now you've gone into the new Premier League season with a crazy amount of money, invested wisely. And you've got a manager that knows how to, you know, get the best out of the team. So against you guys, we need to be on point. I think that, we need to be clinical. If we're not clinical, I think that as the game goes on, I get the sense that Norwich are a quite confident team. So if you guys feel that in the moment, you could get the advantage, you're going to go for it. So, you know, to really put that to bed, we need to take our chances and try and control the game a bit. 
I absolutely think that if I if I was Chelsea, not that I want to tell you or give up away any secrets. Yeah. Frank Lampard's not watching this. Um, <laughs> Hopefully not. I think I think the, the way that Chelsea win this game is by going all in and throwing the kitchen sink at us within mm. the first 10, 20 minutes, right? But if you let us control the game, if you let us grow into the game, if you've if you've watched any of the any of the Norwich results last season, you'll know that. We don't care leaving it late because believe me, we've scored winners in the 91st, 92nd, 93rd, yeah. 94th, 95th. We will not lay down the dead. Even if we are 2 0 down, we will not lay down the dead. So it's super important that Chelsea go to attack the game. It's worth noting, actually, maybe you've got a bit of Lampard luck coming with regards to the floodlight because last time, you won't believe this story, last time Derby came to Norwich City Football Club last season, Derby beat us. And they beat us because the moment that we were defending the game, our blooming floodlight came out. I mean, if, if that doesn't scream tin pot, I don't know. What it was. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. But the way, but the, but it stopped us. It stopped us, and that was a big win for Lampard. And I think that win kind of put him on the map a little bit. And yeah. possibly that win said to the Chelsea board, actually, hang on a minute. All right, you know, he didn't get Derby to to, to the promised land, but look gotten the playoffs yeah he's pulled off some exceptional results in the championship I mean, being Norwich being us last season is an achievement in itself yeah for Derby and um, so you know, it's a strange one I I always feel a bit uncomfortable with um, clubs taking on legends as managers yeah we did the same thing for Brian Gunn the legend is never ever ever going to turn down the opportunity to manage your football club mm. I think it's a hell of a risk though a hell of a risk yeah and I think, and I think, ultimately, I mean, I saw Lampard out trending on Twitter last week, and I'm thinking to myself, was it this week? Sorry, I'm thinking. Yeah, you know Lampard, how the internet is. You won't but, see that yeah. much at the moment. I think yeah. the difference. And then, just just to leave that alone for a minute and come back to your to your other comment about um, the culture of bringing through youth players and you know, you know that that sort of thing for Norwich City. It's our club now is no longer built around individuals. When we went yeah. to the Premier League before the, t- the time before last, I don't know if you remember, we made our record signing Ricky Van Wolfswinkle. <laughs> Ricky, goal, yeah, goal, very dark days. Yeah, exactly. that was the exactly. season where Liverpool would just completely destroy you every single game. Yes, yes. Yeah. As far as you know, <sighs> but now. You know, it doesn't actually really yeah. matter what player plays in that Norwich shirt. It's very much, if, if, if anyone is watching this is, is a bit of a, a business pro, they'll understand what turnkey um, mm. the stands for, which is basically, it's just turnkey. It doesn't matter what player comes in, because we are now recruiting players based on what they believe in, what yes. they like, what they yeah. work with their personality not necessarily being the most talented player in the world and so exactly. I'm really interested in Chelsea the Chelsea project at the moment I'm keeping a keen eye on it because look Hazard world class but ultimately I believe from the outside looking in your everything went through Hazard he was the man so now you've got a really interesting season ahead of you because I actually think that in a weird sort of way Chelsea should take a leap out of Norwich's book in the sense of Build the build Chelsea around what what does exactly the want to be exactly like to like? yeah not Eden Hazard not William not Patrick yeah Roy. what the hell's happened to William. You know what it is? It's old age. I mean, you know, as players get older, they decline. He's not as good as he used to be. But uh, yeah, Hanger, he's got an absolute yeah on his debut against Norwich, and I was like. Oh my God! We all thought that. We all thought that. But you know, with Willian, it's been, uh, you know, it's been a very checkered history with the player. But I mean, go- going back to your earlier point, um, you know, that that is one thing that we're doing with the club right now. I think when we signed Sari last season, it was to bring that identity to the club. But uh, I think with Lampard, and I think this is why I'm, I'm all for the signing of him. The first team has been its own entity within the club setup. You know, with the academy, every single age group is you know, playing the same style of football. But the first team is completely different to that. And it brings up different issues. For example, you know, if you want to promote someone from the youth team, when they're used to playing a different style of football. So, um, 
I think with Lampard coming in, it's been the galvanizing effect this club's needed. It's given faith in the academy, it's given more confidence and hope for the staff and setup because everyone's in it together. Everyone wants the same thing and the same outcome for the club. But yeah, man, just to wrap up today's video, if you could give me a quick score prediction for the game this weekend, do you think that you guys can get something or maybe not today? I, I'm going to protect myself and I'm going to go for a Desmond 2-2. Two -two. Oh, that's very optimistic. I think that Lampard is going to get his first win. It's going to be a good game. I'm going to go for 2-1 because we can't keep a clean sheet. And on that note, you guys, I'm going to wrap things up and I'm going to keep things moving. Obviously, thank you, Chris, for coming on. I'm going to plug everything in the description below, you guys, to find him. So make sure 